Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Marley, nice to meet you all. And today I'm going to be talking about how I've been able to use frustration, the frustration I've seen in my communities, and create innovation and help the world become a better place in my community and across the world. So frustration is fuel that can lead to the development of an innovative and useful idea. I became frustrated by the options of books in my fifth grade class, and I didn't see girls like me represented as the main character. There were no black girls, there were no girls of color, there were lack of people of color, and I wanted to be able to see myself and to see my diverse community represented throughout the books I had to read. And when I told my mom about it, she asked me, well, what are you going to do about it? Why is this such a big problem? And I was really thinking, and I decided I was going to do 1,000 black girl books, where I would collect 1,000 books where black girls were the main characters. And it was born just like that. But solving your own frustration is not creating innovation. Innovation comes from learning. I had to first understand that what I was experiencing was not only happening to me, but to other black girls and other students like me. After researching and seeing for myself, I discovered that only 10% of children's literature includes people of color. I also learned that black girls are rarely the main or lead characters in a lot of books. Now while I saw this in my home, I saw that there was a huge lack on a global scale and on a national scale about the amount of diversity I see. And now while I was initially frustrated at my situation, I learned that the bigger problem provided me, provided me with an opportunity to create large change. So here is where my part in innovation line came in. I had a lot of choices about how I was going to just address this problem. Option one, focus on me and get myself some more books. You know, just have my dad take me to Barnes and Nobles, look in the sections, and then just be done and live my perfect life in suburban New Jersey. <laughs> Option two was to find some other authors and beg them to write more black girl books so I could have some for my own and just get signed copies, special editions, you know, treat myself a little bit. <laughs> or option three, which is to start a campaign that collects books with black girls as the main characters, donate them to communities, develop a resource guide where you can find those books, talk to educators and legislators about how to increase the pipeline of diverse books, and lastly, write my own book so that I can see black girl books reflected and my story reflected in the books that I have to read. And of course, as you can tell, I went with option three. <laughs> so the innovation comes from one, acknowledging yourself, two, studying and understanding the problem, and three, finding a solution. It's a typical adventure and hero story, which I now live today. <laughs> so the lessons that I've learned from innovation come from entrepreneurs. So over the summer, which is in a couple of days, thank goodness, I go to the Grassroots Community Foundation Super Camp, and for the past six years, I've been learning how to use my gifts and talents. Since I was a little, little baby, I'm still a little baby, but a littler baby, I've been learning how to create black girl excellence in my community. One of the most important things I've learned from entrepreneurs is that they're a person who solves problems. Entrepreneurs innovate. They develop businesses based on a gap that needs to be filled. So right now in school, we're doing an economics project where we have to be entrepreneurs and come up with an idea. We learn how to fill the gaps that we see in our whole economy. But it wasn't until Essence Magazine put me on the Woke 100 list and called me an entrepreneur. I was like, I'm not, not whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I was really confused about why I was put that way. But I really finally understood that this campaign is entrepreneurial. I found a huge gap in literature, and I filled it with books that I collected and donated. And this gap hurts all of us, and it harms us, and I'm really working to solve it. I'm opening up our hearts and our minds. I'm working to create a space where it feels easy to include and imagine black girls and make black girls like me the main characters of our lives. I think reading is a great place for innovation because it has no boundaries and no rules. You can be a unicorn, you can be a shih tzu, you can be an adventurer, you can be whatever you want, and it's perfectly amazing. And reading becomes whatever the author and the reader imagines. It's a creative and free space. You can innovate as much as possible. I am thankful for this gift of reading because it's helped me turn my frustration into innovation. I am Marley Dias, and I am redefining power. Thank you.